This is my legit Wim Hof ice bath. One of my projects I probably use nearly every single day. But what did it cost to build? And what's the cost of ice bathing every single day on not only your wallet, but also your body? So why did I start ice bathing? Well, like most of you guys, I was inspired by Wim Hof. So a friend of mine and I decided that we were going to go ice bathing in the winter of 2020. And look, I felt calmer, less stressed, and I had like this weird connection to nature and I didn't want that to end. So in the summer, I decided I was going to build a legit Wim Hof ice bath so that I could ice bath through the whole of summer. Now, for those who haven't seen my build video, I basically took a grocery store freezer and transformed it into this. But a year on, I've been getting lots of questions. How much did it cost to build? How much does it cost to run? How's it holding up after a year? Is ice bathing any good for you? Is it dangerous? Well, I'm going to try and answer those questions. So how much did this thing actually cost to build? Well, before we get into that, if you are completely happy about sitting in a standard chest freezer, freezing your balls off, then I would highly recommend not spending a dime more than you have to. There are plenty of really good tutorials showing you how you can actually build one of these. But if you want to impress your ice bathing friends and you want to build something that looks super nice on your deck, then get ready to spend some money. I mean, I used nearly a thousand US bucks on this thing. But keep in mind, I live in Norway, one of the most expensive countries in the world. Now, you can follow my tutorial, but I wouldn't really call it a tutorial. I don't show you all the details, but of course you can DM me and ask for anything you need to know if you're gonna build something similar. Right, how much does it actually cost to run this thing? Now, I only run this for six months of the year and then I empty it in winter because obviously I don't need it in winter. But with electricity prices soaring and going crazy at the moment, it's important to take this into consideration. So the whole unit itself, including the pump and compressor, uses about 800 watts. Now with a electricity price around 32 cents per kilowatt hour, and the pool running for about three hours to maintain a five degree temperature inside, we're looking at about 140 bucks. Then comes all the consumables, such as chemicals, filters, and even water. With the array of chemicals required, plus the pH test strips, we're looking around 42 bucks. Then there's filters, I change them every month so that's about 30 bucks on top of that. And then we've got water. It's about $1.50 per cubic meter. So I would change the water about three times and that would cost me around $3.80. So all things considered, we have a grand total of $217.80 to run this thing for six months of the year. Well worth the money in my opinion. So how's this thing holding up nearly a year later? Well, all things considered, pretty damn good. Saying that though, there has been some problems. The first of which is a bit of wood warping on the paneling. But considering this thing's been out in the Norwegian winter, I'm not complaining. Another problem has been aluminium corrosion. Now this was completely my fault as when I added the chlorine into the water, I didn't maintain the pH level correctly and when the pH levels are out then the chlorine starts to eat the aluminium. So I would highly recommend you either find a freezer with a plastic liner or if you're like me and can't find one like that and it's aluminium just really maintain the pH level when you're adding chlorine. Now is ice bathing or cold exposure actually any good for you? Well, the science is out. It's been proven to help with the immune system, inflammation, and also help with mental health. 
And I think that's one big thing that we are not talking enough about is the mental health benefits of ice bathing. I mean, we live in a world of comfort and then when we get stressful situations, they turn into much bigger things. With ice bathing, it's a different kind of stress, but your body and your brain still sees it as the same. So it kind of gets used to it. And then when you deal with those other stresses in your life, they don't seem as big. And I think that's something super valuable. But is ice bathing actually dangerous? Well, yes. And I know this, unfortunately, from experience. It was in the fall of last year, and one day I just woke up and I couldn't see properly. I didn't know what was wrong, so I went to the doctor and she told me that I had lost my vision in my right eye. What the hell? And even worse, that it was stress related. I thought, I'm calm, I'm easy going. A few moments later. What the fuck, fuck off cars. I'm trying to record a fucking video. I don't understand, why do I have this? But then I had to think back. What had happened in the last couple of days? Well, I decided to jump in this thing and test myself at zero degrees C and see how long I could sit in the water. I didn't even bloody filmed it. Feeling good, yes. I managed 11 minutes, but I felt great and it was awesome. Yes. But what I didn't take into consideration was the time for my body to recover from that. I went straight into a 22 hour day. I didn't sleep much that weekend. I was out partying and having fun and my body just said enough. Now, thankfully, the eye has healed itself and I'm back to health, but that's something we have to think about. It is dangerous. We are putting extreme stresses on our bodies. And if we stay in there for too long, we can get hypothermia and we can even die. So remember to know your limits. So if it's so dangerous, are there any protocols you can follow to make it safe? Well, yes, Dr. Andrew Huberman from Stanford University has come up with a set of protocols based in pure science. Crudely broken down, he says that you need about 11 minutes in water less than 15 degrees C in a week. Now, I do a lot more than that and I choose to do so. So you guys do you, but the research is out there. So go check it out. There's a link in the description. But despite the health scare, this has been a great investment I love using it every single day and even my wife and other friends of ours get involved. So I encourage you guys to get out there and build one yourself and ignite your creativity and go make your ideas reality. If you want to see something else that I've built that's a bit crazy, check out my videos. Do it!